Over the last month, I have been developing a groundbreaking piece of photography tech that I think could take the world by storm. But don't just take my word for it. You see, I also rounded up some of the greatest minds in the photography YouTube space to gather their feedback and the response really did blow me away. But I'm getting ahead of myself because in order to explain how I got to that point, we first need to go back to the beginning. Now, it's no secret that over the past few years, 3D printing has absolutely blown up and more and more people are using this technology to innovate and improve their day-to-day -day life. And frankly, I wanted in on the action. So over the last few months, I've been experimenting with this, the brand new Centauri Carbon from Elegoo. Now, randomly, they saw a previous video of mine that I made where I reviewed a 3D printed lens. And they reached out to me and were like, you know, if you had your own 3D printer, you could have a go at making one of those for yourself. And I was like, true, but I have zero knowledge about 3D printing and I don't even own a 3D printer and from what I've heard, these things can get pretty pricey. To which Elegoo responded, hold my beer. Fast forward a few weeks and this thing arrived in the post. Now, just to clarify, this video isn't gonna be a review of this unit. I am painfully underqualified to even attempt making a video like that. <laughs> But obviously, Elegoo was kind enough to send me one of their printers to try out, so I do need to extend a huge thank you to them for their help and support and for making this project even possible. Now, you're probably wondering, where do you even get started with 3D printing? And honestly, I was asking exactly the same question. Luckily though, the first steps were actually way more straightforward than I ever imagined. Now, in terms of initial setup, once I got this bad boy out of the box, all I had to do is remove a few screws, switch it on, and basically the rest of the setup was totally automated. It ran through a bunch of technical stuff that I personally don't really understand, like self-leveling and testing out the nozzle or something like that, meaning that I was pretty much ready to start printing in just a few minutes. Now, this particular style of printer is what's known as an XY printer, which basically means that the print head or the little nozzly part that spits out all the melted plastic is able to move around on the X and Y axes or left, right, forward and back. Meanwhile, the build plate, which is basically the flat surface that it actually prints onto also moves but only along the Z axis so up or down. Now this setup has a number of benefits which I won't go too deeply into but the main one is that they usually are a lot faster to print than some other types of 3D printer. Now this Centauri Carbon is also fully encased which not only allows it to regulate temperatures better but it makes the printing process a bit quieter too. Though speaking from experience probably don't place it on the desk that you work at because this thing does tend to you know, rock things a bit. Now, considering all of those impressive features, this is actually a fairly affordable model priced at just $300. And if you want to learn more about it, you can find all of the links in the video description below. But anyway, enough talking shop because you probably want to know what was it that I developed and how did I even go about designing and making it using this printer? Well, first off, when coming up with ideas for what I could build, I knew I wanted to create something that the photography world had never seen before. But I was obviously limited to what I could make using just this 3D printer. Now I have actually seen some other people online making actual lenses for optics using 3D printers, but they are pretty hard to make and require a resin printer, which is a totally different thing to what I have here. So this lens that I want to develop couldn't obviously have any glass elements or plastic elements inside it. So that means I had to go back to basics, but more on that in a moment. In the meantime, the first step on my mission was to actually sculpt my vision. So I downloaded Blender, which is a popular free to use 3D creation suite, and I dove headfirst into it. Now, seeing as Sony E-mount is arguably the most popular lens mount at the moment, I decided that I wanted to start by making my prototype lens for my Sony A7C Mark II. But obviously making a working Sony E-mount for the lens from scratch is just way above my experience level. Luckily, it turns out that the 3D printing community is insanely generous and there are literally millions of pre-made 3D designs that others have made and shared online and that you can basically download them for free and pretty much print them straight away. Some of them even grant permission to allow others to alter or modify their original design just so long as you're not going to sell them on afterwards or use them for commercial purposes. So I found an existing Sony E-mount lens design that somebody had kindly shared online and then after countless hours of watching YouTube tutorials and many, many failed attempts, I finally finally came up with my creation. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Contender for Innovation of the Year 2025, the Precision Engineered Exposure Nozzle Hole Lens, or for short, the Peenhole Lens. 
Thank you, thank you. This lens has been ergonomically designed from the ground up to provide optimum performance and maximum rigidity. The shaft has a solid 5mm thickness for maximum structural support, and the patented bell-shaped tip has not only been hardened to provide maximum impact resistance, but it also has a secondary function, which will be revealed a little later on. But before we look at the business end of this thing, you're probably wondering, what's this section down here? Well, I'm glad you've asked because you see, if you cup this section carefully, mind, it offers additional support and maximum comfort while shooting a load of photos. Sorry, the teleprompter got a little bit jammed there for some reason. Anyway, moving on. Uh, amazingly, this entire design operates without the need for expensive glass elements or fancy moving parts. And if you look closely at the tip, you'll notice a precision drilled hole, or the technical name for this would be the pee hole. Essentially, light goes in, magic comes out. It really is that simple. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the peen hole lens. It's always ready to shoot. So with a working prototype in hand and a killer sales pitch locked in, I now needed to put it through rigorous peer review to ensure that I was on the right track. That means I did what any other professional lens manufacturer would do. I lured some of the most prestigious content creators from across the globe and assembled them all in an all expenses paid trip in Norway to allow them to get hands on with this outstanding product. And needless to say, they absolutely blew me away. King teleprompter. Do you have a smaller model? I, just, I don't know, no, but you know, I'm not confident. When it's staring you right in the face, it's a little bit tough. Is one ball bigger than the other? I think the Mickey Mouse design is really wholesome and, and cute. You got it the wrong way, Em? I wish it was bigger. No, Tom, I told you I don't want to talk about your shorn, hard, girthy body cap. Please, just touch it. The term game changer is throwing the barrel on a lot of products, but this truly represents that. I mean, I prefer smaller lenses personally. Can you make it in what? This is actually 600 millimeters. So. No, 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 so with glowing feedback all round, it was now time to take this product to the next phase, image testing. Now, it might shock you to hear that whilst the design of this product is one of a kind, the technology behind it is actually pretty simple. This is essentially just a pinhole lens. And if you're not familiar with how a pinhole lens works, then the clue is kind of in the name. Essentially, it works by letting light pass through a tiny hole at the end of the lens. And then that light lands directly onto the camera sensor, allowing you to resolve an image without the need for glass elements. Now, ideally, that hole that I spoke of needs to be no larger than the tip of a pin, or at least smaller than one millimeter in diameter. And as you can see, the hole right here is significantly bigger, but why? Well, as it turns out, unfortunately, printing a hole that's less than a millimeter in diameter is kind of out of the question for these types of printers, as unfortunately, it would turn out pretty irregular in shape. And from personal experience, having an irregular pee hole can cause all sorts of issues. Wow. Luckily, I devised a pretty simple solution, and part of that is down to the patent-pending bell-shaped design that I mentioned earlier. You see, all you need to do is sheath your member in some kitchen foil, and then use an elastic band to keep it all in place. And it's actually this ridged area around the bell here that helps to prevent the rubber band from slipping off and flying into somebody's eye. Clever, right? After that, all you need to do is make a small hole in the foil using a pin or a sewing needle, and then you're pretty much ready to shoot. But does it actually work? Well, surprisingly, yes. Though, of course, I'll be the first to admit that this has its limitations. Now, considering that this is just a lump of plastic molded by the hands of a total moron, I was actually fairly pleased with the end results it could capture. Don't get me wrong, I think it's safe to say that Sigma won't be pushing the panic button once they see this puppy hitting the shelves, but still, it certainly produces an image with a certain nostalgic charm. Or should I say... Nostal dick. I'll stop with the puns. But taking off the rose tinted glasses for a moment, I think whilst the design and structural integrity are clearly rock hard, everything goes soft prematurely at the end, which for me at least has resulted in some disappointment. Story of my life, really. The good news for you, however, is that if you or someone you know has access to a 3D printer and you'd actually like to experiment making your own peen hole lens, then I'm actually going to be providing a link to all of the files you'll need to create your own completely for free in the video description below. You're welcome, I think.